get some bad news about Ryan Pulak. We also have our weekly farm report, and we start to look ahead toward the big opening of the UBS Arena, the first ever game just days away. All that, plus a current Islander is our Islander's birthday of the day on today's Locked On Islander's podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today. And thanks to everybody for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and that now also includes YouTube. So if you want to watch this podcast instead of just listening to it, feel free to check us out, Locked On Islanders, on YouTube. And it's always great uh, to to be with everybody today. Some bad news for the Islanders. Ryan Pulak, going to miss four to six weeks of action. We're going to discuss what this means for the Islanders. How are they going to deal with it? because this really does set them back in a number of ways, and we'll break all of that down for you. We will also have our weekly farm report, which we didn't get to yesterday because we did the crossover episode with Locked On Florida Panthers uh, and Armando Vela. So please, if you haven't checked that out, great episode to uh, watch and to listen to. Also, uh, a present Islander is our Islander's birthday of the day, and we have the countdown right now. Just a couple of more days until the Islanders open their first ever historic game at the UBS Arena. And we'll start talking a little bit about that uh, today and tomorrow. And tomorrow we will have a full preview of that game against a tough Calgary Flames team. If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a topic that you'd like us to talk about on the show Feel free to send us an email, the email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your name, first name, and where you're from, like uh, Bobby from Brentwood, we are happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I, We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. So, the bad news. Ryan Pulak, one of the Islanders' top two defensemen, out four to six weeks with a lower body injury. Obviously, the team not being any more specific than that. The injury took place Monday uh, against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Pulak blocking a shot. While the Islanders were on a power play, this is unbelievable how uh, uh, yet another problem with the power play for the Islanders. But uh, he missed the game Tuesday against the Panthers, and that ended his 263 consecutive game streak, which is an Islanders franchise record for defensemen. Now, so far this season, 12 games for Pulak, two assists. 34 block shots, which is first on the team. And then he's played an average of 21 minutes and seven seconds per game, 25 hits, which is also tops among Islanders defense. So look, no doubt Ryan Pulak being out of the lineup is just a, a devastating That they're going to miss. They are. Uh, you know. He 
they can buy on gaining. So there's in the league here. Hey. Fuck. Is a hand defenseman. And in large fun on, on the de- down in Britain. We'll get to the point of left hand. So what's this we just this? talking about? Well, we talk back sometime around is what you're looking at. And we know the Islanders team are we call that, you know, the games, you know, when you start the 13 game trip, you want to make up for that with by winning And yet, obviously, uh, losing puts a big in depth talent and everything else in defense. Let's talk who who is out there. Well, right now, you got two right handed defensemen roster presently Noah Dobson. In Bridge, you got two right handers. Right handed. Shots, you know, three right-handed shots, three left-handed shots. Now, uh, not a real big off. He does have NHL experience, though. He's more of a, a third-air kind of guy. Uh, a, a guy who, you know, so HL with LA Kings. So he has some experience. Hutton, not someone who's contributed a lot. But offensively, he's big. He has a decent shot, but probably ideally a year or two away. So those are real. The only two right handers, and, and you know, if you bring up Bodie Wild, the island down is for the entire season, so he is not coming back. Here. Still stick with Ash Janaho, who played okay last night. So, anyone on the Forcing him on his off side, uh, you could you have most likely have to have Sal on his boilers right now. Just think that if you put Sal and struggling with his games in the last uh, and a lot of young question marks, Delo and Barry Trotz, would not be all that comfortable with. So look to trade for a. Left handed defenseman, excuse me. I'm gonna negotiate when you teams know the Islanders are desperate right handed defensemen and the asking price is gonna be higher. Valid result of that problem. It's a conundrum. It is something that, you know, this is why Lou Lamarillo makes the big. He's gotta solve this problem. And, you know, to me, I wouldn't be surprised to see them call up Ledoux, who has an NA. NHL experience, leave him as seventh defenseman. And if Aho and or Dobson continue to struggle, you put Ledoux in the lineup and see what he can do. That, to me, is Amarello esque Is that word? That the Islanders can make an eye on it. This is a pretty bad loss for the Islanders to handle. Right when they finish this 13-game road trip and they need to make up some points. 
We'll say this is a better team, a team that's been done that, but they really will need to get it all done without one of their best players. One of those guys who outside of the Island, if you're not an Islanders fan, you don't watch the Islanders every day. You don't know a lot about Ryan Pulak. He doesn't have a high national profile, but you talk to hockey people, you talk to scouts, coaches, they know what he is. They know how important he is to this team and the Islanders will miss him for sure. This episode is brought to you by betonline.ag. We're back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of the basketball and hockey season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On. And betonline.ag will give you a 50% welcome bonus just because you listen to the Locked On Islanders podcast. From basketball, football, baseball, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So check out Bet Online where the game starts. Time now for our weekly farm report as we discuss all things Bridgeport Islanders. I, I'm still, you know, worried about breaking into saying sand tigers. I'm so used to that, but uh, I'm getting there. I almost said it before, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So the uh, Bridgeport Islanders last week played three games and they split all three. It started last Wednesday when they traveled up to Syracuse to see, uh, to take on the Syracuse Crunch. And it was Jakob Skerek, the goaltender, who celebrated his 22nd birthday with a 35 save effort in a three to one win for the Bridgeport Islanders. Chris Terry led the offense. He had one goal and one assist, two third period goals, the difference for Bridgeport in that one. And again, a great start to the weekend. Meanwhile, uh, Saturday, uh, Friday, they went to Laval to play the Laval Rocket, and it was Chris Terry leading the way again, a goal and two assists, his first three-point game with Bridgeport. But in overtime, the Bridgeport Islanders fell to the Laval Rocket by a score of five to four. Robin Sallow, a goal and an assist. Paul Ledoux and Armand Durando also tallying for the Bridgeport Islanders. So, you know, first two games, three points, that's a solid start. But then on Saturday, to close out the weekend, they were at the Belleville and they fell by a score of three to two. Two third period goals for Belleville in this one was the difference maker. And again, Bridgeport falling short. So one win, one loss, one overtime loss uh, over the weekend. And, you know, again, this team certainly being a lot more competitive than they have been in recent seasons. The new Leading scorer, uh, goal-wise, Chris Terry has six, followed by Anatoly Golishev with five. But the, the leader for points, Otto, Otto Koivula, two goals, 10 assists. That's 12 points in 14 games for Koivula. And uh, I'll tell you, a plus four also, which is uh, pretty darn high on this team. In fact, it is first on the team in plus minus. So Koivala looks Terry, 11 points in 11 games. Durant, four goals, 11 points in 14 games. Andy Andreoff, nine points in 14 games. As for Robin Salo, and we got to talk about him because, again, he is probably the top candidate, uh, offensively at least, to be brought up. I don't think they're going to do it, but two goals, eight points in 14 games. And he is a minus one. If you're wondering uh, about some of the other names, Michael Dalcole, 
only played five games due to injuries, two goals, four points. Paul Ledoux has just the one goal in 14 games. He is is all even sicky six games no points and uh samuel bulduck 11 games no points so those are kind of the names that we uh have mentioned and, and we'll see what it is that lou lamorello does meanwhile this week more action coming up for bridgeport they are playing now i'm recording this wednesday night so Wednesday night, November 17th, they are at the Hartford Wolfpack. That game starting right about now. So we'll have a, you know, we'll update you on that uh, next Wednesday when we do our weekly farm report. And then over the weekend, a home and home with the Springfield Thunderbirds. Uh, Saturday on the road in Springfield, that's the 7.05 start. And then the Sunday matinee for uh, the Bridgeport Islanders at home against the Springfield Thunderbirds. And uh, tickets are still available. And you can, of course, also watch some of these games on AHL TV at AHL.com. And, you know, look, the Islanders are back. They have a lot of home games coming up, but still great. You know, you go to an AHL game, family kind of an atmosphere, prices are reasonable, always a giveaway at every game. The arena is smaller. It's a little more intimate. You can hear the players better, see the players up close. I love watching minor league hockey, and and you get to see some of the Islanders players of tomorrow uh, before they were stars, so to speak. So lots going on for the Bridgeport Islanders. And, and again, this is a team that is really improving. They're not want them to be just, but compared to last year and the year before, this Bridgeport team is much improved. And when you look at the same, what's happened with Bridgeport owners, the AHL is league and the Atlantic Division where Bridgeport plays Right now, they have thirst that ties them with four other, uh, three other teams for four face in the Atlantic. But Bridgeport has played more games than those teams. So right now, at least, they are technically in seventh place. But you know what? You, you get, you have the three games this week. You win two of them, you're up higher in the standings. It is going to be one heck of a race uh, the whole way. You know, Hershey in third place, and they're, uh, the Bridgeport Islanders only two points out of third. So uh should be a, a, a promising season. And I like the mix that uh Bridgeport Islanders team has between veterans and younger prospects. So more encouragement, let's put it that way, for the Bridgeport Islanders. When we come back, we will discuss our Islanders' birthday of the day, and we'll start to look ahead to the debut at the UBS Arena. That will be a special moment for the New York Islanders. More to come on the Locked On Islanders podcast. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. We want to wish a very happy 30th birthday day. New York was winger out in season six. And Willand, Ontario native the Islanders in the 2013-2014 season. He's had a couple of productive seasons. You know, team goal for a while. That's still his career. But 12 for the Islanders in 2013-2014. 15 goals in 2015-2016. Last year, in 50 games, four goals, 11 points. You prorate that. That's about an eight-goal, seven-goal seven season. So far this year, two goals, no assists in 13 games for Clutter. But Clutter, a team leader, uh, a guy is experienced and who the younger players look up to. He has a, a, a 
you know, not afraid to defend his teammates, not a dirty player. You know, a lot of people will hear the name Cal Clutterbuck and they think, oh, yeah, you know, here's a guy who just racks up the penalty minutes. Well, not quite that simple. Cal Clutterbuck only has one season in his NHL career with more than 100 penalty minutes, and that was all the way back in 2011-2012 with the Minnesota Wild. For the Islanders, he has never had more than 60 penalty minutes in a season. So yes, Clutterbuck is a physical player. He is a grinder. He is the kind of guy who is going to go into the corners and, and get you the puck, and he'll defend his teammates. But a dirty player? No, he is not. We're going to look at one of Cal Clutterbuck's better games with the Islanders. October 30th, 2017 at the Barkley Center, a visit by the Vegas Golden Knights there uh, in town. And for the Islanders, they go with Yaroslav Halak in net, while Maxime Legacy gets the start for Vegas in this one, and it was the Golden Knights getting on the board first with a shorthanded goal uh, in this one. David Perron in the box for slashing. William Carlson pots his third from Cody Eakin at 9:31. Islanders trailing early, one to nothing. But Andrew Ladd answers for the Islanders a little more than two minutes later. His third, Nick Letty and Johnny Boychuk with the assists were even at one. Later on in the period. Dennis Seidenberg goes off for hooking Alex Tuck with his third on the power play for Vegas. Colin Miller and Brad Hunt with the helpers. 2-1 Vegas after one period. But in the second period, the Islanders' power play goes to work. Remember when they used to be able to score on the power play? Amazing. Uh, with James Neal off for tripping, John Tavares pots his 10th. Nick Letty and Josh Bailey with the assists. And then later on in the period, Riley Smith called for high sticking. Matthew Barzal, his third from Anders Lee and Josh Bailey at 17.44, also on the power play. Islanders up 3-2 to two after 2 and uh, trying to hold on in the third period. In the third, the Islanders do extend their lead. Cal Clutterbuck, his second from Dennis Seidenberg and Nikolai Kuhleman at 4.44. Then it was Kuhleman, his first from Seidenberg at 8. 26. That made it 5-2 to two Islanders. John Tavares closes out the scoring for the Islanders, his 11th from Josh Bailey and Anders Lee. Vegas gets a late power play goal from Colin Miller. That, that one coming with Anders Lee, Ox, Brad Hunt, and Alex Tuck with the assist. But the final score in this one, Islanders 6, Vegas Golden Knights 3. And for our Islanders, Birthday of the day, Cal Clutterbuck. Clutter, a goal, a plus two, and his goal was the game winner. So a uh, nice performance there by Clutter. 31 saves for Yaroslav Halak to earn the win, and the Islanders skate away with a 6-3 to three win. So happy birthday, Cal Clutterbuck, and many happy and healthy more. Hope that you will celebrate that birthday with a strong performance Saturday at the UBS Arena. Can't wait. You know, this is something that Islander fans have been anticipating for such a long time. And it is going to be one heck of, a, of an event. You want to get there early. You want to soak it all in. I know there'll be some special guests there. Some of the dynasty teams and Islanders alumni will be in attendance. And uh, the, the brand new arena that is state-of-the-art, that the Islanders are the anchor tenant of, that is much more accessible for fans, both coming from the city and driving out from the island, uh, certainly more accessible for Long Islanders, for most Long Islanders than the Barclays Center was. Uh, great amenities, great sight lines. It should be a loud building. I can't wait to see what it looks like inside that UBS arena on Saturday. So tomorrow we will have a lot more news about the Barclay, uh, the Barclay Center, listen to me, the UBS arena as it opens up. And we will have a full preview of that game against the Calgary Flames. So we are looking forward to that. And uh, we will also preview 
the second ever game at the UBS arena as the Islanders have a busy weekend ahead of them. Once again, I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On Bets. It's your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from handicapping expert Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. Have a great day. Stay safe and have faith. And don't forget, let's go Islanders.